11 years in Green Bay and did a fantastic job shuffling all over the line, filling in where he needed to, and, you know, was there for the first year of Favre. But he's got more of that to his past, like his story coming in to just being a college football player is one heck of a story. And I think there's no better place to begin than his early stages. So let's take it from there, Peter. Well, of course, he was a he was before he even got to got to Iowa. He was at ju- junior college um, and played and played most of his time on the defensive side of the ball, mm. defensive end, defensive tackle before transferring to Iowa, where again, um, I believe he redshirted one year and then and then played mostly on the on the defensive side of the ball. Um, transferred to guard, I think, late in his junior season. At, at Iowa, and then had um, you know an all conference season in '81 when Iowa went to the went to the Rose Bowl. And mm-hmm. I think the things that, that strike you about Ron Holstrom at, at that stage of his career, I think the main thing that strikes strikes me, and probably most people that would go to read about him, is his size. Mm-hmm. You know, 300 pounds ish, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit more. And, and you only had to see the film of him at that time. If you, if you get some film from that 81 season or in his early Packer years, I mean, he looks huge, mm-hmm. absolutely huge. And, um, you know, coming to the Packers was about 40 pounds bigger than any other player that they had on the roster at that, at that time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think those formative years in junior college and then college again, and we touched on this with, with other players is that, mm-hmm. When he got to the Packers, what they got was an excellent athlete for somebody that size. You know, Ron could really run. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think they got into this into this situation where they'd never seen particularly a guard that size. And it was difficult to work out, actually, is he a guard? Is he a tackle? Where, where are we going to play this guy? Yeah. Yeah. Versatility back then was something you didn't really see. As much as we, uh, you know, he kind of set a mold in a way for Green Bay, the way that he shuffled around that we're talking about Elton Jenkins now, you know, where he had the size, the weight, and the smarts to fill in where he needed to. But he he certainly did form one of the most formidable tandems with Kenny Rutgers after he came in in 1985. Yeah, and, and it's like... um. When you look at offensive lines over over the years, you know you try and look for to try and get, well, obviously five if you can, but you try and get a couple of mainstays, of guys that you can, I hate to use this term, but plug in for a decade, mm-hmm. you know, and that's you can you can get a guy in there and you can forget about him, and that's 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 not that's no disrespect, it's the exact opposite. It's saying mm-hmm. I don't need to worry about this guy week in yeah. week out, mm-hmm. he's going to consistently put in a very high level performance. You know, and Holstrom was that guy, and absolutely Kenny Rutgers was that guy at, at left tackle. And, and, you know, they they suffered, as lots of good players did in that period, from playing on some not such great, great teams. Because I've, I've no doubt that both of those guys deserved Pro Bowl recognition at times during their career, and it just, it just never came. Mm-hmm. 